the anti-roll bar comes into play. If you must remove the front sway bar, you must also compensate with spring rate. This will actually be softer. Can you believe that? At FDF, we spent years mastering our craft. From precise welding and machining to competing at the highest level of drifting. One, two, three, Every week we'll be giving you our tips, tricks, and all the insider knowledge you need straight from our shop to your screen. Welcome to Just a Tip Tuesday. Okay guys, Tip Tuesday. We're talking about sway bars or anti-roll bars. What is a anti-roll bar or sway bar and what do they do? Essentially on a car, you have a joining member that connects the left side of the car to the right side. This bar typically is mounted on bushings and has blades that connect to the suspension. They connect to the suspension via upper control arm, knuckle, strut, or lower control arm. There's multiple different options to do this, but for drifting, we typically avoid connecting it to the knuckle because of how far we turn. That's what it is. Now, what does it do? Picture this. You have the front of your car with 8K springs. The sway bar connects both sides of the suspension and we're taking a corner. Let's say we're turning right. That means that the left side of the car is going to start compressing. As the left side of the car starts compressing, the anti-roll bar comes into play. And it actually takes the spring rate from the inside, the right side of the car, and applies it to the left side. How does it do this? When the body is settled, the springs are compressed and also settled. As soon as the car starts to roll, the bar is going to distribute the forces where they are needed. And that is the beautiful thing about a sway bar is that it only sends the spring rate to the side that it's needed, thus sharing the spring rate from left to right and preventing the body from rolling. I hope that makes sense because that's how I think of it. Let's start with the front of the car. We're going to talk about no sway bar. We're going to talk about having a soft sway bar and then we're going to talk about having a hard sway bar. The only time you shouldn't be running a sway bar in the front is if you had interference problems with your angle kit. Um, meaning that your wheel basically was interfering with it too much to the point that it was limiting your wheel and it was hitting the tire and causing some issues. If you must remove the front sway bar, you must also compensate with spring rate. So if your car's spring rate is meant to have an AK spring, if you remove the sway bar, you may want to consider running a 10 or even a 12K spring. If we're dealing with a soft sway bar, you're still going to have the same characteristics as basically having none with a little bit of assistance. So we're still gonna get some body roll, and some people do like that. Some people like having the softer bar to allow the car to roll a little bit before it engages, and then it allows the weight transfer. Some people do prefer it, actually. So I'm not one of those. I prefer a harder, stiff front sway bar. So this is going to be great for transferring weight to the rear, as well as keeping the front end planted with both tires at their maximum grip potential. Having a front stiff sway bar is something that I've always advocated for and recommended to a lot of people. I can still have the softer spring rate to handle all of the bumps going in a straight line. And then as soon as I get to lock, that sharing spring rate effect comes into play. And when I really load up the front corner of my car, in drifting is what I'm talking about, we're running so much grip in the front and in the rear, I need as much assistance as possible and the heavier bar just feels much, much better. If I was to run the amount of grip that I have in the car with no front bar, the front of my car would be leaning and doing all sorts of crazy things and I don't want that to happen. Now going to the rear. Let's talk about a sway bar in the rear. A sway bar in the rear plays a lot in the grip of the chassis and where you're going to be getting that grip. So with no sway bar, you're going to have minimal straight line. This is only referring to the sway bar. We're not talking about anything else. Uh, if you have a sway bar in the rear, you're going to get weight transfer body roll in only the rear mostly. A really common setup is having a front stiff bar and actually removing the rear bar when you're on smaller tracks, tighter corners, and you want to get the most out of your car in those scenarios. The reason you might have a soft bar is to kind of get the best of both worlds. I personally run between a soft and a medium rear bar, and this is going to give you, like I said, the best of both. In cases of the smaller track, the medium track, we're able to maintain good traction, good contact, and still have good side grip and forward grip while using a soft medium bar. If you're going to a hard bar, you're going to be 
focusing mostly on straight line traction. And then in corner, you're going to be not body rolling as much, not weight training, not weight transferring much. And it's going to give you a little bit less grip while at high steering angle. Recommendations for running a stiffer bar would be going into banked corners. You're going to want to run that to distribute the pressure on the tires because there are slip angles on these tires and we are going to surpass those. If we don't run a bar and we're running a bank, you're also going to bottom out that, that coilover. So in any roll bar, it really helps with preventing the bottoming out of suspension, which is instant loss of traction. We do want to avoid that at all causes and we are able to do that with a sway bar without changing the spring rates. Obviously those two can go hand in hand, but it works really well when you can tune them in and use them accordingly. Up next, I'm gonna show you an example of how we connect the sway bar to the suspension, utilizing some of our products that I can show you in the shop. We're gonna assemble them, show you them, and then lastly, after that, I'll get right into showing you how we can stiffen and soften the sway bars. There's a couple options that you can do. Some requires your own modifications and others require essentially just buying an off the shelf product. Follow me. Sick sim, sick sim. Okay. Whoa. This is crazy. Oh, I thought these were high. I don't, uh... All right, Doug and Ader. Hey, what's up? Need to get in here for some sway bar stuff. Let's get into one of these babies. Then I need the female version of it. Okay, come with me. Let's slap on one of these. So this is your basic sway bar link. What you need is a pivot point at two locations. On the one end that bolts to the sway bar, you need that to pivot. And then the other end that bolts to the control arm, the upper, the lower, or the knuckle, you need that end to pivot as well. And the reason is because it's kind of a dynamic change. As the suspension compresses this way, the sway bar is above it, and you're going to need uh, articulation at both points. I've seen some people think that that's not required, and then obviously it either just chews something up or wrecks something. And then you also see OEM stuff. Usually it's a stud that goes through with two rubber bushings. And then you see those rubber bushings go bad quite often. So in drifting and racing, definitely not ideal. A male and a female heim joint is probably the most common setup. We do offer this setup with a linkage in the middle that uh, basically you can adjust on the car, but this is most common where it needs to be pretty short. Uh, the sway bar link connection point is really small and there isn't enough room to fit a like on-car adjustable link. So. That's primarily what this, this is what we sell the most of, this is what we use the most of, and you don't really need to adjust a link. Your left and right side are going to be relatively the same, unless you're setting up the car to do a corner one way a lot more than the other way. Then you might extend one on one side and shorten it on the other. Um, but yeah, I'm showing you how this works. Now, in order to get this to connect to things, we need bolts and spacers. That's where typically we'll be grabbing a M12 bolts of some kind. We'll be including some washers. We do have some spacers. So this can go on the side of the heim joint and it'll space it out. So we can use those. And then the most common that we use are, don't know where they are, dual caliper bracket spacers, Doug. Yeah, are just these simple aluminum eight millimeter thick spacers. These are used on a bunch of our kits. We also send them with our sway bar link kits because essentially you just need a spacer of some kind that gets the body of the heim joint away from the blade of the sway bar. So stacking these, these are cheap and easy to produce and they work well. So that's essentially what a sway bar link kit comes with, bolts, washers, spacers. And then of course we finish it off with some nuts so that you can attach it. Where should we go? I'll go on this side of the table, you go on that side. Okay, so these are the standard blades that we actually sell with our sway bar blade kit. Dropping it like it's hot. Okay, this is our sway bar blade kit, essentially. So it comes with a male end, a female end, and then two pinch bolts that will clamp this. And basically you can weld these onto here, like so. And these give you the different lengths 
which is going to offer a different stiffness. We recommend this kit to be used with an inch and a quarter 4130 chromoly tube. Chromoly has great spring characteristics, so it works awesome as a sway bar. Um, the, this material here is spring material. This is extremely hard steel that really springs back. Well, how do we get more or less stiffness out of a sway bar? Let's assume that you just have a stock sway bar that you're running on your car, which most of you guys are gonna have. How can you get more or less stiffness out of it? Here is exactly how you do it. Let's imagine that one of these is your stock sway bar and we're gonna connect a link to it. So usually you're only gonna have one hole. On ours, we offer three holes in each one of our blades. This is our 10 inch blade. If you run it on the out, the furthest out hole, this is gonna be your softest setting. This is gonna be your stiffest setting. Another way to adjust the stiffness is if you mount the heim joint right to the blade, that's gonna be your stiffest setting. If you add spacers and then put this on, this will actually be softer. Can you believe that? Probably not, but I'll explain why. After we tighten this down, you've created an offset to the mounting point of the blade. So if you imagine that this blade is able to twist like this, the further offset you make that heim joint, the more the blade is going to twist and the bar will also twist. So if we offset the heim joint from the blade, we will soften it per spacer. So you could stack these up to here and make this quite a bit softer without changing anything that has to do with the blade itself. So this would be a really common thing to do in the rear for your fine adjustments. I have personally done this many times and you'd be surprised at how much it actually allows that blade to twist and using the proper material and normal sway bars are actually made out of spring steel. So you can do this with stock sway bars as well. You'll find that it does soften it quite a bit. You can do this in the front as well. So that's a little tip for you. There's other ways you can actually change the length of the blade. This is obviously going to give you a much stiffer, you can imagine I have this much less leverage to twist that bar, but then you have to consider I also have less range of motion. Another tip, if you're buying our sway bar blade kit, you can buy different wall thicknesses of tubing. The thicker the wall, the stiffer the bar. And then another note, most of you guys probably don't know this, but most, if not all sway bars are hollow. If you actually have a solid round bar for a sway bar, it will be nowhere near as strong and less stiff than an actual hollowed out sway bar. So should I go into explaining that? It's gonna take some time. So we're not going to because it would take way too long. These are just tips, okay? If you wanna increase the stiffness, you can simply buy aftermarket bars or you can make your own. Making your own requires quite a bit of skill and tools. This kit requires you to weld stuff and weld it well because we are going to have quite a bit of pressure on this joint that is going to put a lot of strain on welds. So that's it. That's all I have for you on this tip. If we missed anything, just ask us and we'll reply to you in the comments. I probably did. There's a lot to cover with this type of stuff, but take something from it and apply it to your car. We'll see you guys in the next one.